It's no secret that I love Persona, specifically Persona 5. I've previously reviewed Persona 5 Royal and Persona 5 Strikers, and I'm always on the lookout for more games like Persona. Google searching games like Persona 5 is how I found out about Blue Reflection, and being on Persona Talk is how I found out about today's game. Given that 8 is my lucky number, and this is my 88th video, and because Like a Dragon 8 isn't out yet, I could think of no more fitting title for today's review than Loop 8. Buckle up, you're gonna hear a lot of Persona comparisons today. A little backstory, the studio behind Loop 8, Sieg Games, has a very short and frankly unproven track record. Until now, their portfolio has been hardware companion apps, a mobile game called Bound Boyfriend that I cannot find anything about on the English-speaking side of the internet, and Mashiro Witch, which does exist on the Western internet. That effectively makes Loop 8 the debut title for Sieg Games to most people. So do they start off with a bang? Let's find out! But first, please subscribe and click the bell to get updates whenever I publish new content. You can also check out my existing catalog of videos, which focus mainly on RPGs. Alright, let's press forward. This review is based on a physical PS4 retail release played on the PlayStation 5. This is... the story of how I found my own home. Loop 8 follows a high school-aged boy named Nini, who moves to the seaside town of Ashihara from his home in outer space. No, you didn't accidentally turn two pages at once, that's what actually happens. During Nini's time in Ashihara, mysterious beings called Kegai begin randomly possessing the townsfolk, and it's up to Nini to exorcise the Kegai spirits. Should Nini fail at any point, time will reset to the beginning of August, the titular loop of the titular 8th month. Nini's goal is to save the townsfolk and make it to September. Weird space-based backstory aside, I'm a sucker for this premise. Young Everyman Moves to Backwater Japanese Town is the exact setup of Persona 4, and I'm all about it. Further, Strange Monsters Arrive on Earth to Wipe Out Humanity is the premise of Neon Genesis Evangelion, so I am twice as about it. Where the story begins to lose me is in the details. I would say the first five or six hours, I was confused by everything from the time loop mechanic to things as simple as the main character's name. It's easy to get narratively lost. Not to say the story is complicated, it's just obtuse, but the dialogue is dense and a lot of it is written to be intentionally enigmatic. I don't think the story is overtly bad, but it's not really good either. It's just incredibly dialogue heavy. The journey was such a trudge to get through that by the time I reached the end, I didn't enjoy it as much as I was relieved that it was over. Lupe won't win any awards for its graphical presentation, but it's quite eye-catching in its own way. A little fact about me, I love rural Japan. I think it's beautiful and highly underappreciated in Western depictions of the country. That's part of why I love the 2008 Academy Award Best Foreign Film winner Departures, part of my love for Ghost of Tsushima, and obviously part of why I love Persona 4. I think Loop 8's depiction of a small Japanese town is lovely, and the close-knit community therein serves as an emotional through-line to the rest of the story. While it never feels as lively as the aforementioned pieces of media, Loop 8's Ashihara still captures the essence of classic small-town Japan down to the minutia. From the railway crossing to Main Street, from the stairs upon a mountain to the sandy beach, Ashihara feels like it was cut and pasted straight from late 20th century Japan, and I love that. On the technical side, Loop 8 is unimpressive. There's noticeable aliasing, though not as bad as I've seen elsewhere, and the lighting and shadows are all pretty much baked into the time of day. Few places in this small town showcase any local illumination, and pretty much none of the effects are dynamic. It's all very simple and straightforward. However, I suppose it's better than visual novels that are predominantly composed of static images. Of course, the frame rate is the main stickler. While the game runs at a consistent frame rate, movement animations lack fluidity. And I don't just mean running around, I mean any kind of movement. I'm not sure if it's a deliberate choice, but it's surely not going to sit well with more than a few players. You can definitely see that this is a mid-shelf game at best. Musically, Loop 8 has its nice moments, but there simply isn't enough backing music to keep the audio from feeling repetitive. There are only a few audio tracks and a small handful play repeatedly over the day-to-day -day events of the game. 
I'm not even gonna do my usual shtick of playing a few tracks for you, because there just aren't enough songs to make such an exhibition worthwhile. On the other hand, despite the clearly limiting budget of the game, Loop 8 has both English and Japanese voice acting. Most of the performances are pretty good in both languages, so take your pick on what you prefer. I actually quite like Nini's voice in both English and Japanese. I saw her standing before me. I knew at once that my summer had begun. I opted to play in Japanese, since that's the setting and aesthetic of the game. That being said, there's a lot of inconsistency with the Japanese audio versus the English text. It threw me off in the early hours of the game, but of course it's not too apparent if you don't speak Japanese. One last audio thing worth mentioning is that it can be quite taxing to hear the same dialogues repeatedly over the course of the summer. At least there's a fast forward button, but that ends up feeling like a hotfix to a more endemic issue with the title. As mentioned, Loop 8's premise involves time travel, meaning the gameplay revolves around time management. Herein lies the central conceit of Loop 8. The story is segmented into days, and activities implement differing progressions of time. The clock ticks forward as you run around, traveling via the town map progresses time, and activities have set durations. It can be stressful, but as someone who hates time restrictions in video games, I think you can get used to the system pretty quickly. Gameplay is divided into two primary components, and this is what got me interested in the game, because it reminded me of Persona's gameplay dichotomy. The first half is the social gameplay. Nini is all but required to interact with the townsfolk in order to make significant progress. The more you interact with people, the more your relationships build up, and relationships have three flavors. Friendliness, affection, and hate. And you'll have to talk to each of them a lot, sometimes seven or eight times before they actually begin having dialogue trees, which gets more and more irritating with each subsequent loop. Every choice has a probability to succeed, and success or failure will dictate the growth or reduction in your relationship meters. Better bonds unlock better dialogue choices, and deeper relationships reveal more about the person with whom you're interacting. You can also go to class to improve intelligence and social status. Intelligence increases your maximum energy level, and energy is required to do activities like training, which can be done by interacting with various in-world objects. Meanwhile, social status increases the rate at which your stats increase when you train, and higher stats grant better performance and newer skills for combat. Finally, there are blessings, which also bestow bonuses like stat increases and relationship boosts. Once a Kagai has possessed a townsperson, Nini can recruit other townsfolk to journey with him into the underworld on a rescue mission. Party members each have relationships with one another, so it's best to drag along people that are in good standing with the possessed townsperson. Combat is turn-based and attacks are based on the three emotional states. The player only controls Nini, but his Demon Sight ability can predict the actions of his allies, allowing the player to plan accordingly. Friendliness and affection are the most consistent attacks, but are subsequently weaker. Hatred is the strongest attack, but can also empower the enemies you face, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Should, or rather when, the player fails a loop, time will reset to the beginning of the month, and that means everything else resets as well. Your relationships, your training gains, the enemies you've beaten, they all reset. That is where the game design falls apart for me. Aside from wasting any extra time you may come into, buffing stats is all but useless in the long run, because stats get reset after a loop. Blessings do not get reset, so they're more useful. You'll often be running around to every shrine and powering through every dialogue possible to find blessings, since you get to keep them and their relevant stat boosts. Relationships also get reset after a loop, which seems like a player-hostile design choice because you have to go and talk to everyone again, multiple times in a row, in order to get back what you need. Luckily, relationships build back up faster after a loop, but like other features of Loop 8, it seems like a band-aid on a bullet wound. I would have much preferred a better balanced system. For combat, it's admittedly a letdown that Loop 8 doesn't feature dungeons. Kagai are battled in a palette-swapped version of Ashihara, and I think unique or even procedurally generated dungeons like those in Persona would have been a significant boon to Loop 8's later hours. Further, it's unfortunate that the game never forces you into making gambit emotion attack decisions. 
As far as I can tell, there are never enemies that have attack phases or buff periods that can be cancelled or interrupted with hate attacks. Had Loop 8 implemented battle scenarios like those, the combat might not have been so one-note. I stuck to using friendliness attacks the whole game and I made out just fine. Maybe it's not in the spirit of the game, but I found that I made better progress just save scumming. You can save and load whenever, so I just saved before every major decision and dialogue to ensure that relationships and gains built out in as positive a manner as possible. This dominant strategy effectively carried me throughout the rest of the game. It wasn't pretty, but it worked better than anything else. And for anybody that may be upset at me for save scumming my way to victory, I gotta tell ya, I enjoyed gaming the system way more than I enjoyed playing the game the intended way. Even basic traversal is frustrating, because Nini's movement is so slow. I wish he moved, I don't know, double his actual jogging speed? Or maybe the game should have a run button. It's frankly infuriating to watch him lightly jog around while the fate of mankind hangs in the balance. And this only becomes more true as you enter your 6th, 7th, 8th, or more loop of the game. Look, I really wanted to like this game. Aesthetically, conceptually, thematically, Loop 8 is right up my alley. A new RPG from a new developer set in seaside rural Japan, the very Japan I fell in love with. But actually playing this game is a test of patience. For all its strength and deafness and theming, it fails in a dozen other ways elsewhere. The visuals are weak, the audio is bare bones, the gameplay is a drag, and the core design is flawed. There are so many design choices that could have made this game better. Instead of resetting an entire month, what if it only reset you back to after the last Kagai you defeated? What if dialogues weren't so exhaustingly expositional for every character since you know you're going to have to talk to these party members day in and day out? How about making Nini walk 7,000% faster, or adding a run button so he can actually have a bit of urgency with what he's doing? A few basic quality of life changes would have gone a long way towards making this game at least palatable. There are so many good ideas here, but few of them work intuitively. If you're a visual novel and role-playing game fan, you may find more to love here than me. But sadly, in my eyes, Seek Games' home console debut feels like it's just spinning its wheels. Loop 8 on PlayStation 4 earns a 3.5 out of 10. Kocheno no channel, kodoku, onegashimasu. Mite kurete, arigatou gozaimasu. Gokigenyo, sayonara.